Well, good morning, everyone. It is good to see you all in worship with us this morning. As we gather to worship our Lord, there are a few things I want to touch on by way of announcements. One of them is, if you're a visitor with us, be that in person or online, it'd be a great help to us if you would fill out a visitor's card, a connection card. They're in the pew in front of you. If you're joining online or you just want to work digitally instead of the old school method, you're welcome to scan one of the QR codes that's on the screen or uh, available in the comments. There's a link. Those will get you to the connection card. You can fill that out digitally. It just lets us know that you were with us in worship, an opportunity for us to reach out to you and inform you about things going on in the church and its ministries and how you might get plugged into those. Also, there are avenues there for online giving, and we, lots of you have moved to online giving in the past couple years. That works for us and for you, so if you wish to continue doing that. If not, there are offering boxes at the doors, and you're welcome to drop an offering in that box on your way out. Now, just a reminder, it is December. If you've been waiting towards the end of the year to give to the church and you want it to count on your giving for this year's taxes, I know that sounds so crass, but it's reality. You need to get that into us in December because January isn't this year. So just, just a little PSA there. Um, also, prayer. Hey, we've got a group that meets weekly for prayer. That's week with, with two E's, not E-A. Um, and spends time going over our prayer list, lifting those matters before the Lord in prayer as a group, and then prays individually as well throughout the week. So if you have a prayer concern, I want to encourage you, reach out to us. You can use those same avenues. Reach out to us. Let us know about that prayer concern so that we can make it a matter of regular prayer in the life of our church. If God has answered a prayer, we want to hear about that too. We want to praise him and give praises for what he has done. So let us know those things and keep us updated on those requests as well. We would appreciate your help with that. And then, of course, Right Now Media is our uh, it's kind of like a Netflix of Christian media and Bible studies. It's, it's really pretty good. And it's a gift from our church to any of you who would like to sign up for that. But there's a link there to sign up for that as well. Check it out. All right. Now, being the Christmas season, it's also the time of our Lottie Moon Christmas offering for international mission work. And as with all of our missions emphasis offerings, this offering goes 100% to international mission work. We don't take a cut. The denomination doesn't take out a cut going, hey, it's a you know, 10% uh, administrative fee. No, every dollar goes towards the International Mission Board and its work. So we encourage you to be part of that and to give as God leads you to give. As a church, we've set a goal of $8,000 this year as our offering goal. Now, what that means is you should take the time to prayerfully consider what God is laying on your heart to give and then respond by being faithful to give it. I encourage you to do that. Now, to let us know some about this international missions offering and what's going on with it, we do have a video associated with it. Let's watch that video together. We don't see points on a map. They aren't just places to us. We see stories of lives living without the hope found in Jesus. Today, somewhere between the Great Commission and the Great Multitude, we find ourselves facing the world's greatest problem, lostness. Even in the midst of natural disasters, humanitarian crises, and political instability, Southern Baptists send IMB missionaries to give their lives to the lost, living amongst those who have never heard the gospel. People in hard to reach places, people in cities, and those who are dispersed and displaced around the world. At the IMB, we believe that missionary presence cultivates gospel access. Gospel access that knows no geographic or social boundary. We believe that missionary presence fuels gospel belief, and we see the results. We see lives transformed, generations forever changed, and churches planted. Local expressions of the church that take ownership and thrive. 
God has made our purpose clear. Together, we seek to take the gospel to every nation, to all tribes, to all peoples, to all languages. We don't see places on a map. We see our place in fulfilling the Great Commission. This is our mission. This is your mission. And we are reaching the nations together. I think many people don't realize that when we talk about international missions, and we talk about our Lottie Moon Christmas offering, what we're really talking about is thousands of committed and sent Southern Baptist missionaries around the world working in various capacities. In years past, it was common for us to send missionaries, and those missionaries would uh, establish mission work and stay as a pastor and whatnot of that mission work. These days, we do more to facilitate what we call indigenous missions, that is, going into a culture, sharing the gospel, and training up a group of believers that can then go forth to their own community sharing the gospel and we found that to be much more effective and much more honest in our approach to things but god has used that and is using that around the world now we as southern baptists aren't the only ones doing mission work the kingdom of god is moving forward we are seeing uh, revivals and we are seeing spread of the gospel around the world and it is a tremendous thing this is an opportunity for us to be part of that with our financial resources as well as our prayer life. So I encourage you, prayerfully consider how you might become involved in international mission work. Maybe it's through the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. Now, if you want to learn more about mission work or if you want to get to group uh, ladies, if you want to get together with a group of ladies and uh, fellowship together and learn some about what God is doing, our Women on Mission group is meeting Tuesday. That's this Tuesday, December the 6th, in the Fellowship Hall. They'll meet at 9.30 for coffee and fellowship, and 10 o'clock, they'll have a program on, hmm, what could it be? Missions. Yes, Lottie Moon Mission Offering, actually, or uh, on Lottie Moon. So uh, come be part of that, ladies. It's December the 6th, Tuesday at 9.30 for coffee, 10 o'clock for program. Also, our women's ministry that meets on Wednesday nights has a service project and Wednesday, December 7th. That date seems familiar. Um, Wednesday, December the 7th from 6 to 7.30 in room 103, they'll be decorating miniature Christmas trees and delivering those, or, or those will be for our homebound members. And all ladies are invited to attend and participate in that. If you have questions, you can contact Kelly. Her information's there. Also, our children's ministry, get the idea, it's a busy month. Our children's ministry has a children's ministry Christmas party and hayride that is coming up Saturday, December the 10th. That's going to be from noon until 4 p.m. It's for first through sixth grade, and you must RSVP. We need to know you're coming to that. Uh, you'll need to contact Sharla, and her contact information is there as well. That is for our children, children in first grade through sixth grade. And that's on Saturday the 10th, noon to 4. And then our children's ministry program. This is happening next Sunday. And it's next Sunday evening at 5.30 right here. Wait, no. Yes, right here. And it is a musical presented by our first through sixth grade children's choir. So I want to encourage you to come be part of that. Support the kids. Support those that work with the kids in that. So that, and there's churchwide fellowship following that. So 5.30 next Sunday evening, right here. And that kind of rounds out our announcements for today. Having covered all that, let's turn to the Lord in prayer and move forward in our time of worship together. Please join me as we pray. Heavenly Father, this morning as we gather in this place, Lord, we seek to glorify you to truly praise you from our hearts, to bring all that we are and all that we have before you as our offering to you in worship. Lord, we ask that you would lead us in this time of worship. You have redeemed us through the blood of Christ. You have called us your own. 
You have given us your very Spirit dwelling in our lives. Now, Lord, we pray that you would lead us by that Spirit to truly worship you. Lord, guide our hearts and our minds in this time and in the days ahead of us as we go out from this service in a little while. Help us to continue to live lives that worship you, especially as we go through this Christmas season celebrating your awesome gift to your creation, that gift of salvation that is found in Jesus the Christ. Emmanuel, God with us. Lord, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Christ, the Savior of the world, come to earth to purchase salvation of all mankind. This is a Christmas hallelujah. We learned it last year. It'll come to you, it'll come to you very easily. Let's stand please and sing a Christmas hallelujah. Christ the Savior.
Suddenly, the sky was filled with a dazzling array of angels. All who witnessed this were driven to worship the newborn king. They heard and they sang glory to God in the highest. Sing Noel, sing glory in the highest. Sing Noel, sing glory in the highest. Sing Noel, sing glory in the highest. Could ever speak the wonder of this holy night of nights? Who could ever believe? As the angels rejoice and sing. Noel, Noel, sing glory. Noel, Noel. Noel, Noel, sing glory. Noel, Noel. Now the glory of the Father is a peace. Son. In the midst of our strife, he has come to bring life and peace. So let the weary find their refuge, let the hopeless find relief, let the soul of mankind Now let's join our voices with the angels and stand together to sing. Angels, we have heard on high. Say what? 
what may the tidings be which inspire your heavenly song. We have a scripture reading this morning taken from Isaiah chapter 11, the branch of Jesse. I'll read the white text and invite you to join on the other. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The spirit of counsel and of might the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb and the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together. And a little child will lead them. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the people. The nations will rally to him, and his resting place will be glorious. on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, or silent flock by night, behold, throughout the heavens there shone a Christ 
is born. Down in a lowly manger, the humble Christ was born. And God sent us salvation, that blessed Christmas morn. Go
Thank you for that, Jim. Well, we are in the Christmas season, also known as the Advent season. Last week, we began our season of Advent with uh, the first candle, if you will, the first topic, and it was hope, also known as the candle of prophecy, but it's looking at the hope that was promised throughout the Old Testament of the coming of a Savior, the Christ, and the celebration that that should bring within our hearts. Today, we're going to be looking at the second candle, and this one I want to refer to as peace, because we hear this proclamation of peace on earth and goodwill, and we want to say goodwill to men, right? Goodwill to men on whom his favor rests. I say, that, that's not how it goes. Well, that's actually an accurate rendering of the manuscripts. That little goodwill reference that we find in Acts chapter 2 isn't little at all. It's after the angels had proclaimed to the shepherds how to find Jesus and who they were looking for. In Luke 22, verse 14, it says, and this is, well, let me back up to 13. It says in 13, suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. There is the declaration. There is the promise of peace found in Christ, found with this infant in a manger. A peace that is open and available to all who would turn to him. This is a reconciling. In fact, where I want to take you in the passage for today, for us to focus on, comes from Romans chapter 5. If you join me in Romans chapter 5, starting at the first verse, we'll go through the first uh, 10, actually we may dip down into 11 a little bit. Paul, writing to the church at Rome, says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. There it is. Since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. What does that mean? Didn't the angels declare peace on earth? Doesn't that mean peace? One of my favorite Christmas songs is I Heard the Bells. Mm -hmm. It's a Wadsworth poem. And it poses the question. Those bells declaring peace on earth, and yet there's war, there's strife. Where's the peace? Now, if you go through all the verses of the song, you figure it out pretty quick. The peace is in Jesus. You see, it wasn't about peace necessarily among us although Christ does bring peace between us. But when the angels declared peace to men on earth on whom his favor rests, by the way, that's men inclusive, it's men and women, what the angel was declaring was right standing with God. See, there's that little word there we find in that verse. Therefore, since we have been justified, what does it mean to be justified? Let's think about that a moment. It's, what was that? Okay, held apart. Anything else? Justified. Yeah, this is a pop quiz. I'm going to make you think. See how many of you had coffee this morning. If we are justified, we are made right with God. We're made just with God. Now, to be made right with God would imply that prior to that point, we were not right with God, wouldn't it? And that is the reality of our situation. All of creation created by God, <clears throat> loved by God, needed to be justified to God. 
That justification comes in Christ. Some of you, any of you remember training union in Baptist life? It's okay, you can raise your hand. It's, yeah, and some of you are going, I have no idea what you're talking about. That's okay. But back in those days, I can remember learning this little three-part uh, teaching about salvation. And the first part of it is that we are justified to God through Christ. When we come to Christ as our Savior and Lord, when we turn to Him, trusting in Him for salvation, then we are justified with God. We are made right with God. And then we spend the rest of our lives being, come on, you know it, sanctified. We're justified. We spend our lives being sanctified. Does that mean we're sanctimonious? Well, some of us, but... No, it means we are being made right with God. We, we are declared righteous, but through the rest of our lives, we grow in our relationship with Christ. As Paul describes it, we are conformed to the image of Christ. You may look around and go, well, I don't see many people that look like Christ. We're getting there. But we will never complete that journey in this life. Because the third word isn't justified, it isn't sanctified, it is glorified we live in that perfect relationship with god for eternity when we enter into his presence and are glorified through the work the redeeming work of christ in our lives but paul says here therefore since we have been justified made right with god through faith oh there's another big hang up for us Justified, when we really start wrestling with it, can be a challenge as to whether we like that, whether we even want to acknowledge that, whether we want to have the, the grace, the bigness of heart to acknowledge that other people can be justified. But then we get to doing this through faith. Because whether we admit it or not, we as people are geared towards the idea of earning Things, of deserving certain things. You'll hear it in TV commercials. I won't pick on the store by name, but there is a store that sells all sorts of stuff, appliances and whatnot, and part of their tagline in their commercial is, you deserve it at, and fill in the blank. Uh, the whole idea is that, you know, yeah, maybe you can't afford this thing, and maybe you've got one that already works, but you deserve this newer, better, more expensive one that you can't afford, and you need to finance with us. Now, why do they sell us on that idea, and why does it work? For many people, it really works. We're seeing a, a dare I call it a financial pandemic? in our world right now. The people that track markets and track sales are looking at it going, people are spending a ton of money they don't have. I pick on millennials because they're a large segment of our population and they have interesting habits. What we're seeing among the millennial population right now, with inflation going up, with incomes either functionally dropping or actually dropping. We're seeing millennials engage in this thing called buy now, pay later. Have you heard of that? Usually it gets abbreviated, but buy now, pay later. You know what the problem with buy now, pay later is? You still got to pay it later. You're betting that if I, can afford, if I can't afford it now, I'll probably be able to afford it later. Well, there's no guarantee of that. And it's causing a crisis. We usually see this on a small scale around Christmas, right? Families go out, people go out, they spend a lot for Christmas. It's easy to get whipped up in that Christmas frenzy. Um, I haven't been to a mall in ages, but I can remember I used to troll the mall at Christmas time. You know, there'd be a couple days, you go to the mall, I'm going to buy everybody's gifts, I'm going to buy them at the mall, and I'm walking the mall with, it seems like, thousands of other people looking for stuff that just jumps out at me and says, yeah, this one's for Uncle John, you know. Um, we do that. And we get into trouble when we do that. We like to 
think we deserve things, think we earn things. But the reality of Scripture is this, the only thing we earn in this life is to not be justified with God. The only thing we deserve in this life because of how we have lived, the choices we have made, how we have treated other people, how we have responded to God in our lives, the only thing we deserve is hell for eternity. Because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But see, there is that gift from God in Jesus the Christ. And as Paul starts talking here, saying, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, yeah, not earning it, but through faith in Christ, we didn't work for it, we didn't do enough good, we weren't nice enough, we weren't generous enough, we placed our faith in Christ, in that child in a manger, God with us, the way of salvation provided for us we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ folks that is the only avenue of peace with God is Jesus that is why we celebrate Christmas is because of Christ from the manger to the cross to the empty tomb Christ is God's gift of salvation to us, of being justified, of being made right with Him. And so we celebrate, and we should. And we should not shy away from the message of Jesus, the message of the Gospel. As we celebrate this season, we have found peace with God. And we may be having a bad day, and we may mess up, we may become mired in sin and need to turn back to God. Seeking forgiveness, confessing our sin, getting it out of the way, and moving forward in that sanctifying that I spoke of earlier. But we have peace with God. Now, it wasn't a free peace. It was a peace that cost God dearly. But because He loved us, He purchased that peace. So, therefore, we have been justified through faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith, there it is again, into this grace in which we now stand. What is grace? It is a gift. And we now stand in that gift of peace of being justified, of being right with God. We now stand there. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our suffering. Because we know this suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Not only do we have that promise of peace with God, of being made right with God, of having salvation, but we also have... How does Paul describe it? He says that hope doesn't put us to shame. We have hope. Hope doesn't put us to shame because God's love has been poured into into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Not only do we have peace with God, we have the love of God poured into our hearts. What an image. How do we have that? Because we have the very Spirit of Christ dwelling in us. The Holy Spirit of God in our lives shaping us guiding us, empowering us for what God has called us to. He goes on 
in verse 6. He says, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Folks, you've heard that verse before. I quote it every week. There is the core of the gospel. God loves us. When we talk about Christmas and we talk about the gift of Christmas, the gift of Christmas is the gift of salvation. The gift of Christ, God with us, the Lamb of God, the perfect sacrifice for our sin that not only died for our sins but rose again showing us there is eternal life and giving us access to that eternal life with God. It is through God's grace and our placing our faith in Him that we receive peace with God. And we may have heard that before, and we may think, yeah, yeah, peace on earth and all that, yeah. Preachers talk about the gospel again, okay. Folks, that's what the angels were belting out in the sky the night of Christ's birth. They had been waiting and watching for the plan of God's grace to be revealed to all of creation. And that night, in a stable in Bethlehem, peace came to the world. Have you experienced the peace of God? Have you experienced what it is to be made right with Him? Because understand, He's done the work. Again, as Paul says, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Then again in verse 8, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. But he goes on. He says, since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Now, Paul uses a lot of big words there. And he relates this in a way maybe a little different than we would. But in essence, what he's saying is, look, we've been made right with God through the sacrifice of Christ. And if God was willing to do that for us because he loved us, when we were still sinners, when we didn't care about him, he was willing to do that for us. How much more do you think it's going to be when we accept His gift of grace and salvation, when we enter into that right relationship with Him? How much better do you think it's going to get? That's what Paul is saying. When he says, For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to Him through the death of His Son, how much more having been reconciled Shall we be saved through his life? Do you have peace with God? The invitation of God to all of humanity, the invitation that was delivered in that manger over 2,000 years ago was an invitation to peace, to being made right with God, to truly celebrating that gift of God. You know the Old Testament story of Abraham and Isaac, where God says to Abraham, I'm paraphrasing grossly, you can go back to Genesis and read it, 
says to Abraham, I want you to sacrifice your son Isaac to me. Now Abraham's old. And Isaac's his only son, only heir. And yet he loads up Isaac and they get wood and they go off to the place that God has directed them to go. And as Abraham puts Isaac up on this altar they've built and prepares to sacrifice the child of God's promise to Abraham. But he's willing to do it because God told him to do it and he was trusting in God. Not knowing how it was going to work out, but knowing the one in whom it would work out. And God stopped him. And said, no, don't, don't do this. And God provided a ram caught in the bushes as a sacrifice in the place of Isaac. Now we may think, that is such a strange story. I don't like that story. It's a story of a test of faith and a faithful God. But it's also the story of God's offer of salvation to us. Because the truth is, because of our sin, we deserve to die. We are enemies of God in our sin. But God in His love for us has provided another to die in our place. That other is Jesus. And He willingly died in the place of every one of us to pay the price for our sin so that we don't have to. If we will turn to Him accepting that gift, that offer of grace, through faith, we trust in Him for salvation, for forgiveness of our sins, then the promise of God is that we will have forgiveness, that we will be justified, that we will have eternal life through Jesus Christ. So have you taken God up on that offer? Just as we don't deserve it, don't sit there and convince yourself, I don't deserve to be forgiven. I don't deserve to be made right with God. You don't know the stuff I've done. You don't know the stuff that goes on in my head. I don't have to. God knows and he still says, I love you enough to die in your place so that you don't have to face the consequences of your sin if you'll turn to me. Peace with God. It is so much more than a stopping of the fighting. It is things being the way they were meant to be. It means the restoration of a relationship that was broken. And it is restored and we experience the benefit of that right relationship with God. Do you need to turn to Him today and take hold of that peace with God that He offers to you through Christ? If you do, I want to encourage you, turn to God, talk to Him. Our fancy word for it is prayer. Talk to God. Use the words that are on your heart. And in that prayer, I want to encourage you to cover three areas. One, admit to God you're a sinner. I know it's not a newsflash. He knows it. You know it. But get it out there. Admit to God, I know that I'm a sinner. Ask Him to forgive you, believing He can and does. Because that's what we've been reading about. That's what we have been learning about God. Is that in Christ, He loves you. And He has done everything necessary to forgive you for your sin. To pay the price for that sin. Now will you turn to Him asking for that forgiveness. And trusting in Him. To provide it. So admit to him you're a sinner. Ask him to forgive you, believing he can and does. And then lastly, commit yourself to live for him. Follow him as God in your life, instead of trying to be God in your life yourself. That's what got you into the weeds to begin with. Each one of us has rebelled against God, decided I can do it my way. I can decide 
what should be. I know God says this, but I want to. And we have rebelled. Do you need to turn to Him today? If you do, use your own words, but in prayer, turn to God. Cover those three areas. And if you're with us today in the room, I want to encourage you, if you pray that prayer, we're going to have a song of commitment. Come down to the front. I'd love to meet with you down here and pray with you and celebrate what God is doing in your life today. Because it's what we just read about. It's about being justified through faith, about having peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us celebrate that and what God is doing in your life today. If you're joining us online and you make that decision and you pray that prayer, then I want to encourage you to reach out to us. We want to be in communication with you about that. We want to walk beside you in that process. But if you're, if you're not local to us, then I would encourage you, seek out other believers in Christ, followers of His, that know Him and worship Him. A local church body, maybe you've got friends, family, or co-workers that know Christ and live for Him. Let them know what's going on in your life and begin to walk that journey of being sanctified. But God has made you justified as you've placed your trust in Him. Let me lift you in prayer and then we'll have our song of commitment. Heavenly Father, this morning as we again have gathered in this place to worship You, Lord, we are thankful for Your gift of peace. And Lord, as You have given us peace with You through Christ, Lord, we ask that You would help us to share that peace with this world around us that does not know you yet. And Father, that we would be instruments of your peace in this world. Proclaiming the message of your grace. Lord, help us to sing with the angels. To sing of your peace upon this world. Now, Father, for those that are turning to you this morning, trusting in you for salvation. Lord, we lift them to you and we rejoice in what is taking place in their lives. That they're beginning to experience that, that love of yours being poured into their heart through the Holy Spirit. Father, that they have come to know you as Savior and as Lord and are beginning that journey of growing in faith with you. Lord, we ask that you would surround them with brothers and sisters in Christ that can build them up and encourage them in that walk with you. And Lord, that you would take them and use them for your kingdom and your glory. We lift them to you and we celebrate the new life that is found in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand now and sing our prayer to the Lord. Have thine own way. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, heal it and still. Again, thank you for joining us for worship again today. Uh, just one brief heads up. Next week, I'm going to be out on vacation, but Brother Blaze Polk, that is pastor of Dove Nest Ministries, that meets upstairs, is going to be filling the pulpit for me. So come and encourage him in that and hear a word from the Lord uh, delivered by him. He's got a slightly different style than I do, but, you know, that's okay. Uh, no, I, I really appreciate Blaze, and he was willing to fill in next week. So come encourage him. Now...
as we prepare to leave and go out during this Christmas season, go out and share the peace of God with those around you. Be ambassadors. Be instruments of his peace and his kingdom. Let others know the joy that is found in your heart this season as we celebrate the coming of the Christ. Go in the power and in the name of Jesus and proclaim his kingdom, worshiping him. Go tell it on the mountain.